In 2007, Navistar International bet the company on a revolutionary engine strategy. While every competitor chose SCR technology with DEF fluid, Navistar's CEO made a bold proclamation. Their advanced EGR system would make everyone else look outdated and expensive. The Max Force 13, Navistar's flagship Class 8 diesel engine, 12.4 liters displacing 757 cubic inches, power ratings from 410 to 475 horsepower, torque ranging from 1,450 to 1,750 pound-feet, a compacted graphite iron block that weighed 300 pounds less than competitors. Developed in partnership with Germany's MAN Nutzfahrzeuge and built in a brand new Huntsville, Alabama plant. It promised fuel economy, relentless power, and elegant simplicity. No DEF fluid to freeze in winter, no SCR catalyst to service. Just proven EGR technology pushed to new limits. How did one of America's oldest truck manufacturers destroy themselves with a single engine? The answer reveals everything about corporate arrogance, engineering limits, and the most expensive lesson in diesel history. Historical context and development. The story begins in 2005 at the Mid-America Trucking Show, where Navistar first announced the MaxForce Big Bore engines. The 2007 EPA emission standards loomed, requiring massive reductions in nitrogen oxides and particulate matter. Every major manufacturer, Cummins, CAT, Detroit Diesel, chose selective catalytic reduction with DEF fluid injection. Every manufacturer except Navistar. CEO Dan Ustian made the controversial decision to pursue an EGR-only approach. The philosophy seemed sound. Avoid the complexity and cost of DEF infrastructure, offer customers simpler systems with lower operating costs. Navistar's marketing aggressively claimed SCR would become abandoned technology once everyone realized EGR superiority. The engineering came from collaboration with MAN Nutzfahrzeug of Germany. Two engines emerged, the Max Force 11 at 10.5 liters and the Max Force 13 at 12.4 liters. Both featured inline six-cylinder configurations with high-pressure common rail fuel injection operating at 26,000 PSI, later increased to 32,000 PSI. Twin-series turbochargers with interstage coolers provided boost. The patent-pending Ecotherm heat management system electronically controlled coolant flow across multiple coolers. The crown jewel was the compacted graphite iron cylinder block the first in North American commercial trucks. This advanced material offered 70% more strength and 40% more stiffness than traditional gray iron while reducing weight significantly. The Max Force 13 achieved peak torque at just 1,000 RPM, promising instant throttle response and fewer gear changes. But warning signs appeared early. Confidential witnesses later testified that chief engineers presented concerns to CEO Ustian about the impossibility of meeting EGR levels, fuel economy targets, and performance goals simultaneously. The company proceeded anyway. The Golden Age. From 2007 to 2010, the Max Force 13 sold aggressively. Over 70,000 Max Force powered international trucks hit American roads. The ProStar became International's flagship highway tractor, the Transtar served regional haulers, and the Workstar tackled vocational applications. Early reviews praised the engine's power delivery and broad torque curve. Fleet operators initially embraced the concept. No DEF fluid meant no frozen tanks in winter, no urea costs, no concerns about fluid quality. The compacted graphite iron technology impressed engineers who appreciated the weight savings. 300 pounds meant more payload capacity. The twin turbo setup delivered strong, progressive boost without lag. Power ratings covered every application. The 410 horsepower version produced 1,450 pound-feet of torque. The popular 430 horsepower mid-range option balanced power and economy. 
two 450 horsepower versions offered either 1,550 or 1,700 pound-feet through a multi-torque calibration. The top 475 horsepower rating delivered 1,700 pound-feet of grunt. The optional Max Force engine brake by Jacobs provided 415 to 470 braking horsepower for downhill control. Drivers appreciated the smooth power delivery and low-end torque. Fuel economy seemed competitive initially. International dealers pushed Max Force aggressively, promising lower total cost of ownership without DEF expenses. Early adopters became vocal advocates for the technology. But behind the marketing success, a nightmare was unfolding. EGR coolers were failing before 150,000 miles. Some died before 7,000 miles. Service bays filled with broken Max Force engines. And Navistar knew, but kept selling them anyway. Technical Brilliance On paper, the Max Force 13 represented genuine engineering advancement. The 12.4-liter inline six-cylinder displaced 757 cubic inches through a bore and stroke optimized for low RPM torque production. Despite its size, the complete engine weighed just 2,244 pounds dry. Remarkably light for a Class 8 power plant. Power output ranged from 365 to 475 horsepower at 1,700 to 1,900 RPM. Torque spread from 1,250 to 1,750 pound-feet, delivered between 1,000 and 1,200 RPM. The high-pressure common rail fuel injection system operated between 26,000 and 32,000 PSI, providing precise fuel metering and multiple injection events per combustion cycle. Twin-series turbochargers with variable geometry and interstage cooling delivered boost across the entire RPM range. The Ecotherm heat management system represented innovation, electronically controlling coolant flow and temperature across various coolers to optimize intake air and exhaust gas temperatures under all conditions. The compacted graphite iron block was revolutionary. This advanced material provided 70% more strength than traditional gray iron, 40% more stiffness, and twice the fatigue strength. These properties allowed higher cylinder pressures, reduced noise and vibration, and saved 300 pounds compared to conventional designs. The four-valve cylinder head with advanced port geometry maximized airflow, but the fatal flaw lay in the EGR strategy. With no SCR catalyst or DEF injection, the engine relied entirely on exhaust gas recirculation to reduce NOx emissions, this required EGR rates far exceeding any competitor, massive amounts of hot exhaust gases being cooled and recirculated through the intake. The system generated heat and pressure that exceeded component design limits from day one. Challenges rise. The EGR catastrophe began immediately but took years to fully emerge. EGR cooler failures became epidemic across the fleet. These massive heat exchangers, designed to cool exhaust gases with engine coolant before recirculation, couldn't handle the thermal cycling and pressure differentials. When they failed, coolant leaked into the exhaust system while exhaust gases contaminated the cooling system. EGR valves broke with disturbing frequency. The butterfly valve shafts snapped. Actuators seized, exhaust leaks developed around gaskets, damaging surrounding components with corrosive gases and extreme heat. Carbon buildup from the massive EGR flow clogged intake manifolds, restricting airflow and killing power. Turbochargers failed when EGR system contamination reached the compressor wheels. The serviceability nightmare compounded every failure. Replacing the EGR valve required removing driver and passenger seats, the gear shift lever, floor mats, lower dash assembly, and the cab engine cover, just to see the valve mounted high on the engine. The job required 20 plus hours. EGR cooler replacement was equally brutal. The engine used two coolers, high temperature and low temperature, and both failed regularly. 
Parts costs were catastrophic. EGR valves exceeded $3,000. Each cooler cost over $2,000. Labor charges pushed total repairs to $8,000 or more. Some trucks needed multiple repairs within months. Downtime measured in weeks, not days. Fleet operators reported losing 150 plus days of revenue per truck to repairs. Service bays overflowed with broken Max Force engines. Safety issues emerged as engines shut down without warning, forcing drivers into emergency maneuvers on highways. Coolant and exhaust fumes entered cabs, creating poisoning risks. Financial devastation followed. Repair costs exceeded purchase prices for some trucks. Resale values collapsed to zero. International dealers began refusing Max Force equipped trucks in trade, stating bluntly, no resale value. The transition from 2010 to 2012, Navistar remained in denial. Corporate communications insisted problems were isolated incidents, affecting only a small percentage of engines. They blamed operators for excessive idling, claiming drivers leaving engines running overnight caused EGR issues. Marketing materials continued attacking SCR technology as expensive and complicated while praising advanced EGR as the future. The market responded harshly. Fleet operators abandoned international in droves. Market share, once over 20% in Class 8 trucks, plummeted towards single digits. Warranty claims mounted into billions of dollars. Multiple class action lawsuits filed in 2013 accused Navistar of fraudulent concealment, knowing about defects yet hiding them from buyers while aggressively marketing the engines. Late 2012 brought the admission. Navistar announced a transition to SCR-based emissions technology, partnering with Cummins for after-treatment solutions. The company that had bet everything on EGR-only supremacy quietly began installing competitor engines in their trucks. The first ProStar equipped with a Cummins ISX-15 rolled off the line, and customers immediately preferred it. The 2013 MaxForce 13 with SCR added Cummins emission solutions after treatment, but kept the troubled engine underneath. Sales were dismal. Buyers wanted nothing associated with the Max Force name. The N Series engines introduced in 2014 attempted redemption by combining both EGR and SCR systems, but the damage was permanent. CEO Dan Ustian departed. Plant closures followed. The company's survival came into question. Navistar eventually joined Volkswagen's Trayton Group after years of financial hemorrhaging. The Max Force name was quietly buried, but the scars remained. Legacy and Modern Reality Today, a used Max Force 13 engine has nearly zero value. Trucks equipped with them sell at massive discounts or don't sell at all. The phrase Max Force engine in a listing kills buyer interest instantly. Mechanics charge premium rates to work on them, if they'll touch them at all. Parts availability is declining as suppliers abandon the platform. Many owners pursued illegal EGR deletes, removing the entire system and reprogramming ECUS to ignore missing components. While this violated EPA regulations and state emissions laws, desperation drove the decisions. Some operators converted trucks to Cummins Power at enormous expense, anything to escape Max Force ownership. The lessons are brutal and expensive. Sometimes simpler isn't better. EGR only failed because physics has limits. Corporate arrogance kills companies when CEOs ignore their own engineers. Testing unproven technology on paying customers destroys brand reputation permanently. Shortcuts on emissions compliance create disasters, not competitive advantages. Marketing lies compound engineering failures into existential crises. The engineering failures were systematic. EGR rates exceeded the physical limits of components. Heat management at required levels proved impossible. Critical components were underdesigned or cost reduced below reliability thresholds. Serviceability was ignored. Mounting the EGR valve where it required cab disassembly demonstrated contempt for technicians. 
Inadequate testing meant production vehicles became the test fleet. Navistar's recovery required a decade. International trucks now use proven Cummins engines or Navistar's own properly developed powertrains with both EGR and SCR. The company learned that industry consensus on emissions technology existed for valid reasons. The irony remains poisonous. The strategy meant to free Navistar from engine suppliers nearly bankrupted them, forcing the exact supplier dependency they'd tried to avoid. Bold vision, fatal execution, corporate arrogance. The Max Force 13 promised revolution, but delivered disaster. It proved that sometimes the industry consensus exists for good reason. The most expensive lesson in diesel history. Don't bet the company on untested technology. Subscribe for more engine stories.